Let's start with a quick exercise. Ooh, this is loud. Everyone, please take a moment and picture a scientist. Everyone have a picture in mind? Great. Raise your hand if the picture in your mind looks something like this. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of hands. Many of you agree with Google. So this is what comes up when you type scientist into Google Images. You get people in bright lab coats, carefully mixing chemicals or using microscopes, and Doc from Back to the Future. But what if I told you that this is also a scientist? Here is a child observing the natural world, asking questions, doing science. Here's a picture of that child grown up. If you couldn't tell, that child was me. I'm now a PhD student right here at Tufts University, studying nutrition in honeybees. Not much has changed since I was a kid. I've always loved to be outside. As a kid, I collected insects, observed them, and asked questions about what I observed. I had cups of beetles, mesh cages of caterpillars, jars of June bugs. I was doing science on a daily basis, but I didn't realize it. Why not? As a kid, I had an image of scientists in my mind that I couldn't relate to. The scientists I saw on TV and in books were men in white coats, in labs, mixing chemicals and using microscopes. Bill Nye is great, but I simply could not see myself in him. In school, we learned about different types of science, astronomy, geology, meteorology. But in my mind, none of these topics resonated with what I love to do in my own backyard. I couldn't identify with the scientists I saw on TV or the science we learned about in school. It wasn't until my senior year of high school in biology class that it finally clicked for me. We were investigating the effect of nicotine on respiration in goldfish. We each picked two fish, we put nicotine in one fish bowl and left the other bowl untouched. We then watched the fish breathe and counted each time their gills opened and closed. Here was a living, breathing thing that I could see with my own two eyes much like I had done in my backyard, except this time I was in a science class. That's when it hit me. What I had been doing my entire life, observing the living things around me, asking questions and searching for answers, is science. Eureka! I was a scientist, and science provided me with the means to harness my curiosity and apply it throughout the rest of my life. From high school, I went to college as a biology major, and in 2012, I got an internship studying butterflies. It was the experience with the butterflies that showed me not only can science be something tangible for me, but it's something that can be done outside, not just inside of a lab. I was thrilled. Since then, I've done research on caterpillars, moths, and my personal favorite, honeybees. Now that I know a scientist doesn't have to look like Bill Nye or one of those Google images, I wish I had been able to identify as one earlier. Looking back at myself and looking at the kids I know today, I realize that kids naturally have the qualities of great scientists. If we can encourage kids to harness these scientific qualities earlier, we won't just help them identify as scientists, but we'll nurture these qualities that it can help them in life, whether they decide to pursue a career in science or not. Imagine a kid you know, a student, a cousin, a sibling, someone you babysit or tutor, your own child. Do they ask a lot of questions? I'm willing to bet the answer is yes. A survey in the UK revealed that on average, mothers with kids two to 10 years old get asked 200 and 88 questions per day. <laughs> Four-year-old girls are the most inquisitive. They ask their moms a whopping 390 questions per day. Why is water wet? What are shadows made of? Where does the sky end? How do clouds float? Kids are naturally curious. They are continuously learning about the world around them by asking questions. 
That is the basis of science. Kids are also naturally open-minded. Their curiosity has yet to be overshadowed by biases. The basics of the scientific method are make an observation, ask a question about that observation, investigate your question. Oh, before you investigate, first you have to come up with a hypothesis about the answer to your question. Then you investigate your question. And then you come up with a conclusion or answer that either supports or refutes your original hypothesis. And if you can't come up with a conclusive answer, the cycle continues. Science is a verb. It's a process that anyone can use. It isn't a person in a lab coat surrounded by fancy equipment. Every time you ask a question or make an observation, you're doing science. Jane Goodall, famous chimpanzee biologist, figured out this process pretty early in life. As a kid, Jane wanted to know how chickens laid eggs. So she went into her family's chicken coop and waited to watch a chicken lay an egg. Jane asked a question, made an observation, and investigated for herself. In addition to pure curiosity, Kid Jane exemplifies two other qualities that make kids great scientists, resilience and persistence. In her first attempt to sneak into a chicken coop, Jane spooked the chickens. They all ran away from her. Learning from her mistake, she snuck into a second chicken coop very quietly, where she sat for hours waiting for a chicken to lay an egg. Jane was in that chicken coop for so long that her mother reported her missing. <laughs> True resilience and persistence. Jane has kept those qualities into adulthood and is now one of the most accomplished, well-known scientists. Looking inward, I still see this childlike curiosity in myself. I never wanted to grow up. I didn't want to get my driver's license. I did not want to turn 20. And now I realize that keeping my mind and heart young is what makes me a successful scientist. My love for asking questions has fueled the projects I do as a PhD student. One of the first projects I did here at Tufts was on the mineral preferences of honeybees when drinking water. This study stemmed from a single observation of a bee drinking from a dirty puddle. The undergraduate I was working with was convinced the bees were going to get sick because the water just looked gross. But I kept an open mind, I observed the bees, and they looked fine. It turns out beekeepers had been wondering about this behavior for quite some time, but no one had come up for, with a scientific explanation for it. I was determined to find out. I was too curious not to. After training honeybees to drink water from plastic tubes, which, let me tell you, took a lot of resilience, and three years of field work watching those honeybees drink from plastic tubes, persistence, I can now say that honeybees likely drink dirty water as a way to supplement the minerals in their floral diet. So dirty water is like a vitamin supplement for bees. Finishing that study, publishing that paper, and talking to beekeepers about my research has been a truly fulfilling experience. But if my high school biology teacher, Mr. Saunders, hadn't shown me that I could be a scientist, my story might have been different. So as adults, what can we do? How can we help kids identify as scientists and embrace science as a verb rather than a noun? As parents, educators, caregivers, siblings, here are three things that we can do. First, if you can, respond to questions with more questions. If a child asks, why can I see the moon during the day? Give them a question back. Why do you think you can see the moon during the day? I realize that when you're being asked 300 questions a day, coming up with more questions sounds and can be exhausting but it will pay off. It will keep kids curious. If we just give them an answer, they're unlikely to investigate on their own, and they might eventually stop asking questions. Which brings me to my second point. Encourage investigation. Imagine a child sitting at the window watching the trees sway back and forth on a windy day. Do the trees make the wind, the child asks? 
This is a question born from direct observation. The scientific process has begun. When possible, facilitate this process further. Give the child an idea about how to investigate the question on their own. What happens if you go outside and swing some branches around? Does it generate wind? If so, how much? If we show kids that science is a verb, we will empower them to be the scientists and investigate their questions on their own. This is a skill that will pay off in life, whether that child makes science their profession or not. And lastly, get outside. Not everyone has access to a lab with expensive equipment, but what everyone does have access to is the outdoors, and it is crawling with observations to be made, questions to be asked, and experiments to be done. Even kids who don't grow up with a backyard like I did can still use the outdoors as their lab. Naturalist and author Emma Maris describes how her own children have found nature in empty lots. In those lots, Emma's kids strive to learn about and identify the plants and insects that live there. They are doing science outdoors in an urban setting. Somewhere down the line, many kids lose their curiosity and stop asking questions. In one of my favorite songs, Dave Matthews sings, Funny when you're small, the moon follows the car. How many of you remember sitting in the back seat of a car, watching the moon chase you, wondering why, how? Over time, we get so busy that we miss these little things. We tend to lose our childhood curiosity. If we can encourage questions and investigation both indoors and out, not only will we help kids identify with science, but we will preserve their curiosity. I'm not suggesting that we steer kids into a career in science, but I am suggesting that helping kids to identify the scientist inside can only be a good thing. This preserved curiosity will lend itself to success in business, public policy, architecture, and pretty much any career you can think of. Who knows, that kid who asked about the trees making the wind might grow up to create better wind turbines for clean energy. But this will only happen if children realize the power they hold. And each one of us has the power to make that happen for the kids in our lives. So let's end with an exercise. Everyone, please take a moment and again, picture a scientist. Now go help them see the scientist in themselves. Thank you. Thank you.